Previously, our team used Fake Jam to brainstorm how we can improve the user experience of our food delivery app. We are adding a feature to reorder past moves and we'll use Fake Jam to diagram the user interface logic. Diagrams are great for visualizing user flows, aligning on important decisions, and quickly iterating on ideas. Our team's engineer invited me to a new Fake Jam file. Let's check it out. It looks like they've started audio conversation. Let's join the call. Hi everyone. Let's use this file to diagram how the new reorder feature will work. If you missed the brainstorming section or you need a refresher, you can visit the file I just embed on the board for reference. Next, let's insert FakeGem's diagramming basic template. This template saves us time by providing the basic shapes we need to represent different points of a flow, like its starting points, decisions, and processes. Let's get started. First, I'm duplicating the star shape from the templates to reflect a customer's entry into the flow. In this case, the customer is logging into the app. Once a customer is in the app, we need to fetch their data. I'm duplicating a cylinder from the templates to represent a database. In this case, it's their profile information. In order to show a customer their order history, the app needs to know if they've placed an order before. This will be our first decision point. So let's duplicate the gray diamond shape from the template. Our team started writing a function for this already. Want me to drop the code here? Oh, awesome. Let me quickly drop a code block for you. Next, we'll add connectors and double click them to add text labels indicating possible choices. At this point, we'll build from the two possible choices. If a customer hasn't placed any orders, then there's no history to display. This ends the flow, and this feature won't be shown to them. Let's add a rectangle shape to indicate the process and a rounded rectangle to represent the endpoint. If the customers have placed at least one order, we have an order history to display. So let's add a rectangle to show that process and a cylinder to represent the database for their order history. When we're fetching the order history, we should make sure to have some skeleton loading states. I'll add a note of that so I don't forget. That's a great call. We should also discuss what information from their order history to include. I'll use the table widget to start that list. Awesome, this diagram is really starting to take shape. We are getting to a point in the flow where the app needs to decide which past orders are available to reorder at that time. This process will check if the restaurant open, if the dish still on the menu, or if the dish only available during a certain time of day, like a breakfast item. The app will perform this function as a loop until all the items from past orders have gone through this filtering process. We also want to include a space to highlight this loop in the flow. So I'll add a rectangle shape to create a container for it and label it using the text too. Great! We've decided what orders will be displayed to the customers and when. So let's add a folder shape from the toolbar to represent this list of options. 
From this list of currently available orders, we need to decide how many are displayed in the app. We know the history page will only be able to display 8 orders, so the rest will be hidden in an overflow list. Okay, if the list of available orders is less than 8, then we only show those. And if there are more than 8 options, we can add a show more option at the bottom of the list. I'll add one more folder shape to represent the list and top this whole diagram off with an end shape for the flow. Looks like we're ready to start building this. And that's diagramming. Every team might use shapes, connectors, and colors a little differently to fit their own needs. But now you know the tools you need to get started. To find inspiration, check out more templates for things like team meeting agendas, empathy maps, and icebreakers at figma.com slash at figjam. Remember you can always insert templates in a figjam file from the toolbar.